So I spent a week learning Unity's netcode for game objects so that I could integrate multiplayer into one of my Unity games, and I'll show you how I went from this to this in about a week. Let's get started. So for the first day, what I wanted to do was to hack together the basics, the basic structure of We Play Tanks. So how that works is that you control a tank that drives around a toy block arena. Now the turret will rotate to follow your cursor. And you can also shoot bullets that will damage other tanks. These bullets will also bounce off walls. They can be used defensively to destroy other bullets that they collide with. There's also a few other features such as uh, landmines or rockets that some tanks shoot, but I'm going to avoid those for now because um, uh, <coughs> I'm lazy, but in order to keep the scope small. I started by creating a elaborate tank model. Uh, here you can see I used three whole shapes and then I added movement to it. So for rotating the turret in the Wii game, you point your controller at the screen, but for an inferior platform like my PC, I'm going to use the mouse as the cursor. So the rotation kind of worked, but as you can see here, I actually had to lock it so that it only rotates in the Y direction to prevent it from tweaking out when you hovered over it. I then added a bullet that is instantiated on left click. Now this bullet uses a rigid body and force is applied uh, at the time of instantiation in the direction that the tank's turret is facing. So this causes it to uh, shoot out straight. Then I added an on collision event to the bullet so that when it collides with something, it checks if uh, A, it's a wall, B, it's a tank, or C, it's another bullet. If it collides with a wall, I added a effect to it for it to reflect off at an angle. This is cool, but in the Wii game, the bullets only last for a set amount of bounces before they destruct. So what I had to do was add a health component to them. Now, hitting a wall will remove a portion of the bullet's health, and after two bounces, it'll be destroyed on its third collision. It's also destroyed immediately after hitting a tank. So at this point, I felt like I had at least a working prototype of what I wanted to do. So tomorrow, I'm gonna dive into the netcode and see how that goes. So I began day two by reading some documentation. Unity actually has a pretty good set of tutorials going over the basics on their website. Under netcode for game objects, there's a hello world guide. Highly recommend you do that. It's super easy, super simple. It goes over the very, very basics of netcode. From there, uh, I jumped around YouTube to follow a few different tutorials. There's a very good series by Dilmer um, on the netcode for game objects, along with a few various ones around client behavior. I was able to spawn a tank for the player and spawn bullets on the server. Now, making them show up on all instances uh, is another thing. It was a little confusing when I was getting started. But once I got the logic working for that, I had to figure out how to make the explosions from tanks being hit show up on all servers. Uh, again, I wound up doing this by uh, spawning them server side, and then all the clients would see them. The number one piece of advice I can give you is to read the documentation, then try to implement something from it. There's a way to spawn a prefab and uh, set it as a player object instead of using the default player prefab. Try it out. I feel like I learned a lot more uh, by experimenting than just following a tutorial and making the code afterwards. So yeah, mess around, try different things out. For day three, I wanted to jump right into implementing Relay and a lobby system, two services provided by Unity. So the Relay server sits between all the players. No two players ever connect directly to each other. All communications instead go through the relay server. Each player will connect to the same IP address and port because they're all connecting to the relay server's IP address. And the game clients can trust that they're all connecting to the same every single time. And also this prevents your players from seeing each other's IP addresses or causing any other security concerns. Now this is a service specifically by Unity, so to add it, you need to first add it to your organization in the Unity dashboard. The player hosting needs to allocate the relay first. This process then creates that relay server and allows the clients to connect to that relay server. I then spent a little time trying to understand Unity's lobby service. This is something that allows your players to connect before or during a game session. You can create public lobbies too, which using simple attributes that other players can search, discover, and join. You can also set up invite-only lobbies. 
So I'm going to dive into that a little bit more on the next day. Day four, it sucked. I got home from work around 5.30. Uh, I went to bed at around 11.30 and absolutely nothing was accomplished in that time. Although I spent a lot of time uh, testing different things and writing code, in the end, I couldn't actually get it to work. I didn't actually have anything to show from it. I spent the day trying to integrate Unity's lobby function with relay and scene management, trying to flip from the lobby scene to the actual battle scene. I looked into multiple examples on how to do that. Uh, there's a few good examples that Unity provides, such as Boss Room, which is a larger project uh, that Unity created to showcase all of their multiplayer functions. Uh, Unity also has a lobby sample project, and although these work pretty good independently, trying to sort of integrate them into my project didn't go so well. Although I was reading a bunch of different examples, I was just reading them, copying the code, and then trying to slam it into my project and I wasn't really understanding them as well as I should have been. So I, I, I think that I was trying to cheat my way out of learning to make it go faster. You know, it, it was like trying to fit a square peg uh, into your... Anyway, uh, it's fine, you know, progress is not linear in these sort of things. So for tomorrow, we go again. Day five was actually a pretty solid recovery from the disappointment of the previous day. I found this great free wood texture on the Unity Assets store. Big thank you to Nevlext for this awesome free asset. This looked perfect on the ground, and I also used it to cover some of the blocks around the arena walls. I was finally starting to understand how client RPCs worked and was able to set up victory and defeat conditions. Now, all that those victory and defeat conditions do is they check the number of tanks in the scene. So if the enemy tanks go to zero, victory is triggered. If the player tanks go to zero, defeat is triggered. I also created two other arenas and set up some basic arena management logic that randomly selects one arena to show. It stores the index of that arena on the server, and then when each client connects, they grab the value of the arena to show from the server. So all the clients will mirror the host with the arena loaded. Day six started on the enemy logic. In the Wii Tanks game, it's pretty simple. The simplest tank just chills, rotates its barrel, and shoots occasionally. So I was able to implement an enemy tank for my game that did just that, and I was also able to spawn it on all clients. Right now it just sits in place and fires bullets after a random 1-3 to three second pause, which results in it occasionally killing itself, but the turret rotation is just a simple script that turns the turret um, until it hits a max rotation amount, then it rotates it back the other way. Eventually, I'd like to add some sort of ray cast where it'll check to see if an enemy is within its line of sight and shoot that. It'll also check to see if the ray cast, what that hits, if a ray cast back will hit the tank and it'll vo avoid killing itself. But, you know, there's so much enemy AI that I could implement. Uh, we could implement path fighting. We could implement bullet avoidance. Uh, we could implement, you know, a dozen other things, but there's just no way I can tackle all of that in the time frame that I set for myself. I still want to do this in the future, so, you know, possible follow-up. So, with one day left, I just wanted to clean up the scene a little bit, slap on a new coat of paint, make it look a little bit closer to the original. Okay, so, uh, now it is actually, uh, day nine, but the game is finally complete. You know, when you think about it, there may be a few weeks with nine days in them, maybe. But th there was always just one last thing that I wanted to add. Here we are. I also redid the bullet to make it a little more bullet shape. I then added a smoke trail to follow it. Yeah, done using Unity's particle system, just a basic little smoke particle, also a small particle for when it hits walls. The next thing I tackled was making the tank and blender redoing our old little basic tank. Um, I'm not great at Blender, but you know, I was able to whip something together in about 20 minutes that looked more tank-like than what we were running before. And here it is compared to the older model. Um, I, I definitely like how it looks. It looks a lot more similar to the original Wii Tanks model. I'm pretty happy with it. I did notice though, once dragging them into Unity that the UVs were pretty scuffed. 
So after jumping back into Blender and cleaning them up a little bit, I was able to greatly improve how the texture sat. And I, I, I know, it's still, it's still not perfect, it's still a little weird, but, <laughs> oh man, if you think I care. So anyways, uh, moving on, I switched the camera to be ortho. Comparing my game to the original, it was pretty obvious that they were doing that, and I, I really kind of like the feel that it gives now. So with the tanks now added, along with a red one painted as the enemy, I was actually pretty shocked to notice how nice it was looking. Anyway, the tank driving did look pretty ridiculous. Just couldn't compare it to the original game with it sliding all over the place like that, so I knew some changes had to be made. I decided to make the tank body rotate to face the movement direction, and this looked pretty good, but it was still missing a key feature from the Wii Tanks game. When the tank in-game strafes back and forth, in the Wii version, it doesn't rotate, whereas mine does a full 180 with its body. So what I did in order to fix this was instead of taking the movement direction and then rotating the tank body to follow that movement direction, what I did was take the absolute value of the movement direction. So regardless if it's moving negative one or positive one, it's still going to face the same way. This works for almost all directions, but if you can see there's the northwest and southeast diagonals, it screws up. And that's because the movement direction is negative one, positive one, and positive one, negative one in these directions. So I set up a condition to avoid those two directions. And now it looks pretty solid. I also had to implement some tread marks because, you know, it just it wouldn't look the same without them. So I did that using a trail renderer to repeat a sprite and then destroy it after a certain amount of time. So now that it's actually starting to look nice, uh, there's one last bug that I wanted to fix that you might have actually noticed from watching the movement in the past segment, is that when the tank moves diagonally, it actually moves faster than when it moves horizontally. And this is due to math. So all I had to do was fix it, was to normalize the direction before translating. So now, I think it's finally actually done. So to show a full loop, start menu, host, clients, they need to enter the lobby code to enter. Then once both players have readied up, the game begins, both clients connecting to the new scene, a timer counts down and they can independently drive around afterward. Now on death, they're both kicked back to the lobby, but by defeating the enemy, I reload the map, reload the arena, and they play again. And that's about it. There are a few last things that I didn't actually get around to. Uh, I wanted to deploy it on Steam, uh, just integrate with Steam's API so you could connect with your Steam friends and play it. Uh, I wanted to add object pooling, uh, that, which would greatly improve performance. I wanted to really give a great AI, you know, set up a proper state machine, uh, set up different types of AI, different levels. I really wanted to modularize the project so I can cut it up and place it all together into different multiplayer projects. We could add lives for the player, uh, we could turn it into a roguelike, I don't know, you could do a million things with it. I've never created a video like this before, so, you know, if you want to drop a like, that would be super appreciated. Uh, I might be doing more of these in the future. Holy shit, I went to college for four years just to ask people to like and subscribe.